<laughs> okay. On a sawhorse <laughs> in the yard. Yeah. With a water, with a, a, a big pot over a wood fire. Okay. Yeah. There you go. I'd come home from school when I was in you know, high school. I had chickens and I had a little sister. She was my my uh, helper. Some would call her something else. <laughs> <laughs> Conscript, conscripted. <laughs> you're, oh, you're, oh, you know, you know, the thing, yeah, yeah. And, um, and but uh, you know, we we could butcher fifty chickens. Wow. In a you know after school of an evening, and, it, and, and now those weren't broilers; those were all stewers. You know, because I had layers. That was my okay. my thing. I, I think I got up to like 300 layers when I was in you know when I was 15, 16 years old. It's a significant project, and um, and I would then cook all those stewing hens. Wow! Like I could get maybe eight in a great big broiler pan, 350 for three and a half hours, and um, I'd pick all the meat off and put it in uh, quart containers, freeze it, and sell it as pre-cooked chicken. Huh. So, and, that's cool. And at the time, I mean, those were little, you know, leggern, those were just, you know, production leggern chickens, and they only had like a pound of meat on them. But at that, I mean, this is going back into the early 70s. Mm -hmm. And at the time, the going rate for culled chickens in the industry was 19 cents. And I was getting a dollar fifty. Nice, wow. value, you know, value adding. I yeah. was able to put labor in it, yeah. but it meant yeah. that there was yeah. a lot more income, you know, per chicken. Yeah. By doing that. Okay, there's the chicken. Okay, I think everybody's kind of here. So, yeah. So uh, it starts at this end, and uh, so Dan's going to start, and then and then he'll we'll talk it through to you. Uh, feel free to kind of rotate as we go through, but the the kill is there. The queen. Just a carotid artery, and um, and the it, it's a faint. So it's like it's the same sensation as you know, you bend down, and all of a sudden you pick up real quick. You get lightheaded. That's the sensation. It's faint. Uh, so yeah. What we're attempting to do is try, like I say, both the veins and the arteries on both sides of the neck. We're going to for a right-handed killer. You're going to load the bird with the feet to the right, rest to the right. Okay, so it's presented properly for the, the bird. As soon as you can squeeze everything together, you don't have damage, you don't have flopping around, you don't have stress. You put the bird in, it stays secure, you give it a nice tug down so it's secure. Then you're going to pull the head, you're wanting to cut right on this red waddle right there. So we're going to pull down, rotate, I'm going to do quite a few. Pull down, rotate, cut right off the jaw, so I'm right here, okay? So right there on that jaw slicing, you've got incredible loss from both veins and arteries on both sides. The windpipe is intact. There's very little kicking around of the bird initially. And you check your work, you check your work by eye reflex. If there's no eye response, it means he's completely flatlined unconscious. Our goal is for them to be flat. I'm sorry. <laughs> They're going to be flatlined unconscious for about in about in less than two seconds. So we have eye response, turn, cut. No eye response. Done. So the jerking around so is it, just muscle. That's yeah, right. That's okay. just muscle reaction. Yeah. So again, it is a, a very um, it's a non tensing death. You know, for those of you who are like you know, uh, like Law and Order fans or whatever, like the difference between a smothering death, a suffocation, versus a loss of blood, like slitting your wrist or something. I mean, I don't want to be offensive, but you know what I'm saying. It's, it's the difference of that. Yeah. So you get the lightheaded in this. You get the lightheadedness and the passing out um, versus the, the, the tensing. And so you've got this, like, this, again, lightheaded passing out, kind of going to sleep sense versus versus tense, locking up and, and trying to breathe. And that's very, very important. It's and we notice that even, you know, occasionally we do mess yeah. up and you'll get, you know, you'll, you'll cut a windpipe and stuff. 
And um, but again, you see the windpipe is completely exposed there. Um, and that's what you want to see, a nice stream of blood very quickly. See how that comes, uh, a big, big stream of blood, and then it's it's completely uh, dead. I have a question about it. Go ahead. Yes, ma'am. Are you cutting both carotids? I'm cutting both sides, yes. And so I'm getting it coming and going. Exactly. You don't, you don't yeah. have to, but it does speed up the process. If, if you're good. If, if, you're, if you're just learning and starting, we recommend just doing one. You're not, you're not in that big a hurry and just get one good before you start. Yeah. The big thing is just to... The idea is to allow the autonomic nervous system to continue to operate yeah. so the heart actually continues to pump, the lungs continue to breathe, so it actually pumps the blood out of you. If you ever go to the supermarket, I hope you never do, but if you do, you get all that chicken with all that uh, black around the bone, mm -hmm. that's clotted blood mm -hmm. from the electrocution in the industrial process. It's just down the autonomic nervous so system. After the birds have gone through the rotation, um, there you don't want the bird to sit upside down very long. So you notice that I'm loading two birds and killing two birds. If they're in upside down for too long, they're going to get lightheaded and pass out for the wrong reason. So um, that's why we do we do load kill, load two, and kill two. After they rotate it around, it takes usually. Um, about two minutes, but they're not responding, they're not kicking in any way. Then they go into the hot, the scalder. The scalder is about 145 degrees. Um, they're in it for exactly 60 seconds. It is, um, has soap water to help penetrate the feathers, so it cuts the surface tension. We're just using a mild detergent, like a, um, a dishwashing soap. I mean, it could be an organic, we use the Kirkland, but it's, you know, it's an organic, environmentally friendly, uh, uh, dish detergent and we just squirt like some you know just squirt it until it's sudsy um, and and then and then this one stops by itself it's in rotation one of the key ways to know that you get a good scald is this leg skin peels off very very easily okay sarah go ahead sorry because there's no blood in the animal. So when they when there's no blood, there's no bruising. Um, you also notice they're very, very white. If they come out any pink or red, it means the killing wasn't done properly. Um, so they can stay in that plucker for quite some time, actually, without being damaged. Um, and realizing, too, that the plucker is completely useless without the gut, without the get them something to do down there, without um, the scalder. If the scalder is ineffective, then the plugger is completely useless. So when someone says, what do I supposed to spend my money on initially? It's this, because ultimately plucking by hand is not that hard if the scald is correct. Um, I'm not saying this one specifically, but I'm just saying this piece of equipment is the most important to scald. The, the, skull, the skull is the key to the pick. That's, that's the point. The these, birds, these birds are exactly seven weeks and one day. Uh, they were seven weeks old yesterday. Um, we just picked the largest birds out of the shelters. Uh, you'll see that uh, later on today. Um, and so that gives you an idea of sizing and whatnot. We're doing about 60 birds. What type of chicken? These are Cornish cross. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is that all you all right. do? Is the Cornish cross for the meat? For the meat, yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. We can talk about. We'll talk about okay. breeds in the field. Okay. Sorry. We'll talk about breeds in the field. Oh, because they um, get way, way the sheep. Yeah. You get all the lead. Okay. Yeah. Um, when you when you get another batch, Sarah, um, turn around and kind of show the foot I'll, I'll gut one here. Just the reason these birds are this age is from a tenderness issue, a size issue, and a breeding issue, uh, also a price point issue. Um, and efficiency. After about, after about seven, eight weeks, they their efficiency for the way they have for a and all that stuff. We can talk more about later, though. Um, eight, 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 we do them at eight, 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 nine, some at nine for 
Uh, the, um, the, the kill tone set up there, we call that the Wheel of Fortune. Oh, the Wheel of Fortune, the, the solder is the relaxation chamber. So what are you, what are you pulling out? Uh, our, our patients have never sick another day. This is the surgery over here. We've never had a patient sick another day. We, we cure everything that ails them. Guaranteed. So he said seven to eight weeks. The, 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 two, the two rules of this, Daniel made up these two rules of this. Number one, keep your mouth closed. <laughs> Number two, if you feel something on your lip, don't lick it. <laughs> Um, I'm not familiar. I've been doing this for a while. I'm not familiar with that uh, supplier. Uh -huh. is, that, is that just for, uh, for, for dressing? Or what was your specific wording? Yeah, uh, Grace invented those. <laughs> these, yeah, these are, these are um, they're, they're catfish skinners. Okay. Available from, uh, you know, fish supply houses and stuff. But uh, they're wonderful for pen feathers because they're, 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 they're wide. A lot of people use needle nose pliers. Right, yeah. But here you've got this big wide you maul, you know, yeah. you just catch it real, real quick. Okay. Uh, Sarah, uh, turn around and tell them about cutting the leg off. So you want to find the space between the joint and just cut there. All right. All right. So you're, you're, you're pulling the bird away and see the valley right there? There's a valley between the two joints. And all the cutting is in the valley. Yeah, go ahead. And notice she's wearing a um, a, a protective glove here. To this is where people lose their get cut right here. Yeah, yeah. Um, so so if you can if 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 you're having to saw, then you're hitting joints somewhere. That's not good. Are you saving the chicken? Yes, we are. We sell those. Yeah. Uh, bless Weston A. Price Foundation. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, we used to compliment people. So everybody see the valley there? You can hold yourself away, and you're just hitting that valley, all right? Okay, now let's cut one. Do you need the right. chicken, chicken feet raw, or do you smoke them? Do, we, do you just sell them raw? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we put, uh, what do we pack? We put, like, tin in a bag or something? Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, people, people pay a lot more for their pet food than the cow food. Okay, so I'm going to now, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, eviscerate one, go through the technique. So, so we pick up the, pick up the tail here and take out the oil sack. All right. Then we're going to flip it around. Again, everything is in the valley. So you see this valley here. I'm going to pull that up and just cut the skin enough, open it up. Here's the crop. The crop, that's the sack right here. Now, uh, the key is to always bring the birds to this fasting. If the feed hadn't been taken away from them yesterday by noon, this would all be full of feed and grit and junk, and it's a nightmare to butcher them. So we want their crop to be clean and their GI tract to be cleaned out. We want them to be, um, you know, gut clean when they come as much as possible. So then I grab this and kind of just roll my thumb under it, uh, like, like so, all right? Switch hands, go underneath, and pull out the windpipe and the esophagus. See, there's the windpipe. It's, you know, it's got, it feels like a, like a vacuum hose and then the esophagus, all right? Just let that be, flip the bird around, pull it up tight here on the abdomen, cut as close to the vent as possible without cutting the vent. Again, just a, enough that you can get your finger in and rip it open enough that then you can go in. So I go in basically twice. The first time is to grab all this fat that's on the gizzard. Here's the gizzard. I'm gonna grab all that fat and pinch it off. That's a lot of fat. If you're not careful, that can go away with the bird. So if we're selling these birds for $4.80 a pound, how much is that per ounce? 
Four dollars eighty cents a pound. How much is that per ounce? How much? Boy, we can't do any math in our head anymore. Laura Ingalls Wilder would be upset with us. Four eighty divided by sixteen is three. Three times sixteen is right. Sixteen ounces in a pound. Everybody with me? So an ounce is worth thirty cents. All right. That right there is an ounce. Okay. There are three places where you can lose an ounce. One is here. One is if you're sloppy with the neck and you cut it way too high and you, you lose a couple joints on the neck. That's why Daniel said you want to slit the throat right against the waddle. So you want as little coming off of that neck as possible. Okay? And the other, I'll show you the other in just a moment. I'm gonna I'm gonna go in, scoop down. Do you have to be careful not to tear anything or does it matter? With the intestine, you don't want to. No, you don't want to tear anything. Right. But the answer is yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So here are the, here are the guts. I'm going to roll them over. So there's the heart and the liver looking right at me. Beautiful, beautiful liver. Here's the gallbladder. All right. So I'm going to pinch off the gallbladder. There's the heart and the liver. Okay. Now I've got the guts in my left hand. They've never hit the table. They're in my left hand. Now I've got one GI tract, look at me, I pull it to the left, cut down as tight as I can, pull it to the right, cut down as tight as I can, cut underneath it. All right. And that preserves, that preserves the little fatties on the, on the pubic bones right here. And it preserves as much as possible all this skin up here. So the three places you can lose now, one's the neck, one's this fat, and one is is, is sloppy vent work back here where you lose skin and you and, and all that, okay? So, we said an ounce is worth how much? 30 cents. 30 cents. If I lose three of them with just sloppy evisceration, that's how much? 90 cents. 90 cents times 40,000 birds. A lot. <laughs> $36,000. You just paid a salary Ooh. with just sloppy evisceration work. Wow. Wow. You know what? Wow. The details do matter. Yeah. They really do, okay? So, um, uh, here we have, when we're running full steam, one person um, takes out the lungs. So, I'll, I'll just pull out the lungs for you. The lungs, of course, are sitting down in the rib cage. There's one of them. And so, what I'm, I'm scooping down into the rib cage, okay, and Pulling up the lung. There's the other one. Every bird has two. I've never seen one with just one. I'm gonna check it. I've got a little piece of I've got a little piece of wind pipe there. Broke off. Little piece of wind pipe. Get that off. Okay. Now I'm gonna spray it out. All right. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna make a little slit right here. And that is a signal down the line where they're doing quality control. That's the signal for them that this bird has the lungs out. So if they get a bird without this little slit in the back, they know all the lungs have been taken out. All right. So, question? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, I wish we had chickens with five-pound livers. <laughs> yeah. There again, thanks to Weston A. Price Foundation. Um, you know, we used to only be able to sell about half the livers, and in the last, you know, 10 years, we can't get enough livers. Same with the feet. Five years ago, we were composting the feet. Now, the feet add 50 cents a chicken. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Gizzards, so the gizzards are problematic because they take so long to clean. So the problem with the gizzards is, A, almost nobody wants them, and number two, they're very, very difficult to clean by hand. Okay? So you have a lot, in the time it takes to clean one gizzard, I can process three chickens. The gizzard's worth, you know, 20 cents, the chicken's worth $15. Okay? And so, so now, if you, and we have this from time to time, somebody will say, hey, I love the gizzards, I want all of them. We'll save, we'll save them for you for free. You can take them home and clean them. We have never had a person come back the second time. <laughs> ever. ever. Uh, uh, by the time they finish cleaning that bucket full of gizzards, they're, they're like, done. they're like, I'm over it. You know, I'm done. 
So um, it's kind of a, a little joke for us. But yeah, I mean, we, we say gizzards. Uh, the, you know, our marcasif can be cultivated. For example, the gizzards are a favorite for catfish, catfish fishermen uh, because they're real stiff. They hold on a hook real well, and they're really great to pull along the bottom of a, you know, of a channel of a, of a river. Uh, they're also a real preferred um, uh, thing for like falconers <laughs> to, uh, to, tra to to feed uh, uh, birds of prey. So you know, if, if you if you happen to know have a, a market, there, yeah. know a market there, then <laughs> all go for it. But but to actually clean them by hand for a quarter a piece, it, you'll get tired of them real quick. I mean, if you get if you can get a dollar a piece, that'd be fine, but. Nobody that eats gizzards willing to pay a dollar a piece. P -p the kind of person that would eat a gizzard is not the kind of person who would pay a dollar a piece for it. <laughs> okay? I've never eaten a thinking of it. Right. Um, all right. So, you do, do another one. All right. Um, yeah. And, and if you want to rotate, if, if, if people yeah. that were right in front want to let people that were in front, everybody wants to rotate around, all right?